Okay, so today I'm gonna smelt uh, for the very first time in my life. I'm gonna smelt some metal. A 25 pound brick of lead. And I'm going to melt it and pour it into this uh, to make some diving weights that will go on a diving belt. There's little belt loops there. So to melt it, I've got this little hand torch from Horror Freight, this little camping stove. I got some vessels from Goodwill to melt it into. And also, yeah, this is all going to get contaminated, so don't. this should never go back into your kitchen. Right, that's why I got these at Goodwill. And you also need a spoon to remove the impurities. I got myself, uh, for lead smelting, you want to have uh, P100 or N100, whatever. I've been needing to get one of these for sanding as well. It's good for paint and pesticides. 36 uh, bucks at Harbor Freight. This was 40 bucks plus shipping from Walmart. This lead, I paid some guy a dollar a pound for it on Facebook Marketplace. Got some gloves for handling the hot stuff. Somewhere I've got some iPro. Oh, the stove, it's too heavy for the stove. I can't break it into chunks, so I'm just gonna try and melt it as best I can, like this. <laughs> Lovely, so I was able to burn a hole through that and remove it from the pot and so now I've got the pot moved on to the burner so now this is going to melt much quicker because I've got two heating sources lovely this spoon I'm using I bought from Goodwill uh, you want to use this to sort of remove the soup skin um, which is impurities and you don't want those in your weights uh, doing this is very satisfying now this part was uh, super sketchy you want to make sure to try and lift it nice and slow at first now as i'm pouring here it would have been preferable to work with a smaller load you can get better more specialized equipment like crucible holders and um, even for this uh using a soup pot with like a pouring spout would have been much better. I just couldn't find one at that Goodwill that I went to. Oh damn, that was sketchy. As I put the saucepan back on the burner, it's kind of sketchy floating around and I'm just trying to leave it so I can, it can stand freely. You can see as I try and bang the weight out of the mold, I'm being pretty tentative. So I should have preheated that mold just to have a more even cooling. All right, now it's time to get the other chunk of that 25 pound ingot melted. When I threw it into that saucepan, that was kind of sketchy because it's so heavy, it splashed a little bit. This is an example of why you want to give it a proper time to cool or you'll mess up the, the pour. At this point, I'm not sure if I'm heating uh, a shell of impurities, so I take the spoon and check and see it. it's like a solid chunk uh, left floating in like some ice cream soup, you know? It's just so satisfying, removing that soup skin. Love it. At this point, the handle for my mold became so hot it was starting to burn my glove hands. And those little mousy sounds is me saying, F me, that is so hot. There are more expensive heat resistant gloves out there, but I think in this case, uh, some big pliers would have been just fine. So I made eight weights out of that 25 pound ingot. Um, I'm cleaning up and dousing stuff in water. The water is also going to be contaminated so along with the dunking vessel so just be mindful of where you get rid of that water. Yeah, as you can see maybe a different dunking vessel would be better here uh, just because I don't want to have that contaminated water in my patio. There you have it, I made all those weights from that 25 pound brick. Okay, first one, two pounds, four ounces. Get some 10 snaps here. Better save these for the next, for the next batch. 
Some of these have some kind of rough edges, so I'm going to see if I can hammer them. Nice to work with something so malleable. Last part, I'm going to try spraying these with some polyurethane. These uh, weights have been sprayed both sides and they had a day to dry off. So, I guess that means it's time to make my belt. So shiny. It's dry. Okay. Alright, so there it is. Uh, I weigh about 220, so. I need to do 10% of my weight, so this is about 22 pounds. Uh, you want to kind of have these evenly uh, distributed. This is, uh, it's preferable to have like a rubber or a silicone belt, but you want to have this kind of uh, buckle so that you can, if you need emergency, you can pull yourself, pull it off and you can float back to the surface. Yeah. Well, there you have it. Thank you for watching. Uh, for those of you who watched through the video, uh, I don't consider myself an expert in this. This is my first time doing this sort of thing. Uh, I just thought it would be helpful for other people who may be doing it. They could see what sort of techniques I used and hopefully avoid some of the pitfalls. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe. If you have some suggestions or questions, let me know. And uh, yeah, hope you have a good time out there diving.